Previously, we looked at binomial probabilities for independent events. And in this video, we're going to look at binomial probability for dependent events. Please note that the binomial formula that we looked at previously only applies when we have independent events. And you'll see why as we go through this tutorial. So for this scenario, I want you to imagine that you have a pack of cards and you're going to take three cards in turn. But when you take the first card, you're not going to replace it in the pack. And when you take the second card, you're not going to replace it in the pack. And what we're trying to find is the probability of getting two jacks out of three cards without replacement. And that's an important difference. If we were to take the card and then replace it in the pack, we would have an independent event. If we take the card and we don't replace it, we have a dependent event. Just a couple of things to point out before we carry on. There's four jacks in a pack. And in total, there's 52 cards. OK, so when you're first presented with a pack of cards and you take one card at random, there's four jacks and there's 52 cards. So the probability of drawing a jack on that first card is four out of 52. Four jacks out of 52 cards. And because we know our probabilities have to add up to one, the chance of getting a not jack or anything other than a jack must be 48 out of 52. Those two numbers must add up to one. Now, if we were to replace that card back in the pack, then the probabilities for our second event would be exactly the same. But we're not going to replace that card. Now that we've removed that card, there can only be 51 left in the pack. So if we take that top line, when we've removed that first card, it was a jack. That means there's only three jacks remaining in the pack and there's only 51 cards. So our probability of getting a second jack, assuming we've already drawn a jack, is 3 in 51. There's only three jacks left in the pack from 51 cards. And our chances of getting a not jack, remember these have to add up to 1. So it must be 48 out of 51. There's still 48 non-jack cards in that pack. But let's take the alternative route. Let's say that first card wasn't a jack. That must mean that there's still four jacks in that pack, but there's still only 51 cards. So now we have four cards of 51 are jacks, meaning that 47 cards out of 51 are no longer jacks. Now let's repeat that for our final draw of the card. If we drew a jack on the first card, here, and we drew a jack on the second card, there's now only two jacks left in the pack, and there's only 50 cards. So our chance of getting a third jack is two out of 50. Our events need to add up to one, so our chance of getting a not jack on that third card, assuming the first two cards were jacks, is 48 out of 50. So our second option is we drew a jack in the first card, and we drew a non-jack in the second card, so now we're down this branch here. That means we've removed one jack from the pack, but there's still 50 cards. The number of cards will always be 50, because we started with 52, and two are gone. So now there's three jacks in the pack, out of 50 cards. That means there must be 47 non-jacks, out of 50 cards. Now the other half of our diagram is for when we didn't remove a jack in the first card. Now when looking at that branch, we've said that there's two options for the second card. We either draw a jack or we don't draw a jack. So let's assume that we have drawn a jack. That means there must only be three jacks left in the pack out of the 50 remaining cards. So again, we have three jacks out of the remaining 50 cards. And non-jacks again will be 47 out of the 50. These always need to add up to one. And finally, if we draw two cards and neither are jacks, there's still four jacks in the pack out of the remaining 50. And there's 46 non-jacks. Now I asked the question, what is the likelihood of getting two jacks, exactly two jacks? So let's highlight our branches. Two jacks, we could get a jack, then a jack, 
then a not jack. Or we could get a jack, a not jack, and then a jack. Let's just put a star next to these branches. Now, if our first card is not a jack, then we would need to get a not jack followed by a jack and a jack. And that is all of our options for getting two jacks in three cards. So as in the previous example, we're going to multiply along the branches and then add those three numbers together. We have 4 in 52 times 3 in 51 times 48 in 50. We have 4 in 52 times 48 in 51. That's the probability of getting a non-jack on the second card. Times 3 50 ifs. And finally, we have 48 on 52 times the probability of getting a jack on the second card times the probability of getting a jack on the third card. Now let's multiply each of those through. First of all, 4 over 52 times 3 over 51 times 48 over 50 equals 0 0.00434. Second, we have 4 over 52 times 48 over 51 times 3 over 50, and we get 0 0.00434. And finally, 48 over 52 times 4 over 51 times 3 over 50 is also 0.00434. Or the total 3 times 0.00434, which equals 0 0.01303. To five decimal places. Now the reason why we can't apply the binomial formula to this problem is because the likelihood of a success changes after each subsequent event. So whilst the tree diagram can still be used, we're not able to use our binomial formula.